What is up, YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media, bringing you yet another episode of Pokemon White. This is episode number 62. And in the last episode, we finally made it to the Abundant Shrine. We did some exploring, and it was a lot of fun. And it was such a long time ago, too. My goodness, it's been forever since I uploaded a video of Pokemon White. It's been forever since I uploaded a Metroid video, too. I need to get on that. But my editor has just been acting really stupid lately, and I don't know why. So I've been having trouble getting up anything that's not a showdown battle. But even that's going to be coming to an end because we're going to be doing Wi-Fi battles once our capture card comes in. And hopefully that comes in next week if I'm lucky. Anyway, that's enough babbling about that. These kids don't really have much to say. They're just talking about Landorus. And it's a legendary Pokemon that we can get here. If you happen to have both Tornadus and Thunderous in your party, and of course, uh, in black and white, you can't get both without trading. So you have to catch one in your game and trade for the other uh, from the opposite version. So uh, in black, you get Tornadus, and in white, you get Thunderous. So that is that. And that's basically what these kids are saying. So yeah, we kind of came in here for nothing. Kind of, sort of. Well, there was a lot of items in here, so I guess it was kind of worth it. There was, what, two TMs, maybe? I don't even know. I honestly don't remember. It was way too long ago that I recorded the last episode. So I guess we'll just finish up exploring in here, see what else we can find. Don't think there's much left that we haven't gotten. And then we'll move on, probably head on over to uh, Undula Town, and go from there. Anyway... Yeah, I'm trying not to uh, run into any Pokemon in the grass here. Oh, look, TM92, Trick Room. Actually, a surprisingly good move. But anyway, as I was saying, I'm trying not to run into any Pokemon here in the grass, but if you're looking for, uh, let's see, what do we have here? Vulpix, and I believe Yanma can be found here, so that's pretty cool. And I know for a fact that Vulpix can't be found anywhere else, so that's pretty cool. Alright, moving on run through this grass. I'm just looking for items, looking for items. Ah, there's nothing here. Did I even battle this girl? I guess we're gonna find out. No, I did not. She was just hiding in the corner. I kind of figured she was going to give us an item or something, but I suppose not. So let's get this battle started. Horsey, level 63. We've got our Chandelure, level 66. Surprisingly, this Horsey is almost at the same level as us. It's really sad. Not sure why people don't involve their Pokemon, but whatever. So Shadow Ball takes out that Horsey pretty easily. Ponytail's gonna be next. And we'll just stick with Chandelure for this, why not? And we'll go for another Shadow Ball. And again, it's an unevolved Pokemon, so Ponytail should die from that, but it doesn't. Somehow it survives. Not sure how. Kind of shameful. Looks like maybe 5 HP, if that. And it just keeps spamming agility, so it doesn't even want to hit us. Not that fire moves will hit us anyway. And Chandelure's gonna grow up to level 67 after defeating the Ponyta. And we've got one more Pokemon in this battle, Sunkern. Statistically the worst Pokemon of all time. Yes, even worse than Magikarp. I think I've said that a couple of times, but that just blows my mind that anything could be worse than Magikarp. But alas, Sunkern is. Alright, well, I guess that was pointless because there are no items over here. There's no reason to battle her. I guess I kind of needed the experience, so there's that. Pick up the hyper, yeah, hyper potion over there. And... yeah, I don't even know if I needed any. But I guess I have one now. Oh man, my repel wore off. Oh no. Alright, um... I keep hearing shaking grass and I'm just running around in a circle, so we're gonna leave this place. Had enough of the Abundant Shrine. So we're back here on Route 14, and now I remember I climbed the waterfall to get here. Let's use another Max Repel, which I'm starting to run out of, actually, but that's okay. I guess I'll buy more at some point. If I remember, if not, I'll be very sad. Just wanted to see what was up that waterfall. I think that's the direction I came from, so we're not going to go that way. And it looks like this will take us back onto the... Not the normal part, but the beginning part of the route. So, we'll go that way, but first we're going to battle this guy because... Yeah, we need the experience. Why not? So he's going to send out an Absol on a 68. 
Yikes, and that is a higher level than my Chandelure, so this could be a problem. Thankfully, it doesn't go for Night Slash. That would have been deadly to Chandelure, but he goes for Parish Song instead, and I'm able to get a Flamethrower off, and that does a lot of damage. Our Parish Counts both, both fall to uh, three, which shouldn't be too much of a problem, because Night Slash is probably going to kill me. Oh, no, and I survived with seven HP somehow. And I'm able to take out the Absol. Of course, now I get a critical hit when it doesn't matter. Typical. Dodrio is next, so I guess I will take this opportunity to switch out my Chandelure so he doesn't die from Parish Song. Or just die in general. I mean, he only has 7 HP. We'll bring out uh, Archaeops for this. And we'll go for a Rock Slide. We outspeed the Dodrio, so that's not that big of a deal. It's stab and all that good stuff, so Dodrio does not stand a chance. Down it goes in one hit, and Walrin's going to be next. We still have a type advantage, so might as well stay in with Archaeops. And we'll go for a Rock Slide, as long as it doesn't miss, which it doesn't. Be in good shape. And, ooh, it doesn't kill. But he flinches and can't move, so that's good. I guess he could have done some significant damage with Surf or Ice Beam or something if he had survived. And by survived, I mean not flinched. But that wasn't the case. All right, well, I guess that's it for that battle. That wasn't too bad. That could have been a lot worse with how high level those Pokemon were. So, okay, I know where we are now. So, I battle all these people. So I can just run on through. Should be able to run straight to uh, Undula Town, which is on the other side here. No more trainers to battle. Yeah. And then I can heal up. Are there any items over here? No. Where are all the items? I feel like I'm missing some, but there's just none around. Alright. To the Pokemon Center we go! Chandelure took a beating, and my repel wore off just in time. How about that? How about that? Yeah. Alright, well I wanted to take a minute to, uh... I guess talk about a couple of things, and I'll just let you watch what's going on here, because nothing exciting is going to be happening. So, first of all, we are running a giveaway right now, and it's for a shiny chest pin over um, on Pokemon X and Y, so if you haven't joined on that, you can check the video on our channel. But we're getting a lot of responses for that, so I just thought I would mention that in case anybody hasn't joined yet. We also are running a forum now, which is available for uh, trades and battles and like friend safari uh, exchanges and all that stuff, which is on our website. That link will also be in the description, so you can check that out if you want. And yeah, what else did I want to talk about while I'm just not really doing anything exciting here? I don't know. I'll find something to talk about later, I guess. Let's talk to this girl. Because she's going to actually give us something interesting. HMO6 Dive. And that's going to be for Undula Bay. Uh, which you can use to dive underneath the water. And there's all kinds of items and stuff. And for the most part, it's just going to be items that you can sell for a large monetary value. But I'm not really interested in that. So I don't believe I'm going to be showing that. Now as for these houses, I purposely skipped over the first one because there's a very strong trainer in there that I do not want to get mixed up with at the moment because I'm nowhere near ready and in fact that's going to be the last trainer we fight in this playthrough. So probably like eight or nine episodes from now. We don't have that much left. But anyway, there's not much to do in Undula Town just in general. There just really isn't. It's a small little town. So... I guess I'll show what little you can actually do. And, oh look, a big nugget. I just gave my Kroganol a big nugget. Totally not on purpose, I meant to give him the lucky egg. Because he could use some experience, he's only at level 65. Let's talk to this kid. You have an extremely bored look on your face. So he's going to ask you to battle. And you might as well say yes. This kid's going to give you a lot of money, and he's not that difficult to beat. The cool thing about this is every day that you come here and you talk to whoever's outside here, they will challenge you to a battle and each day there will be one more person added into like a little mini gauntlet. And I think it goes up to five trainers? I'm not entirely positive, four or five. So 
that's pretty cool because you just earn so much money that way. More so than experience. But the trainers also get harder as you go along. I believe the second trainer has two Pokemon and the third one has three and so on. So that's kind of cool. The only downside is that after you battle them all, so after like the fourth or fifth day, they're just gone and you can't battle them again. So that part kind of sucks, but it's good for a little while. I suggest making sure that the Pokemon that is battling is holding an amulet coin so that you can maximize what you get from the battle. So, he's going to take you inside after the first time you beat him. Isn't it great? Isn't it spacious? This is my dad's villa, and I can use it freely. But when I came here, surprisingly, there was nothing to do, so now I'm bored. As you may know, my dad is totally obsessed with items at the ruins. Hey, you're bored, aren't you? Come here tomorrow, too. I don't mind having a battle with you. So, if you come here uh, the next day, you'll have more battles to do. As I mentioned... Off to the left, though, is the guy that's interested in the items from the ruins, which you can use Dive to reach, but like I said, I'm not going to be showing that, unless I get, like, some overwhelming request to do it. Not something that uh, is necessary, and it's not even really a side quest, because you don't get much from it at all, so... That's why I'm deciding that it's not uh, completely necessary to show, but... If you guys think that... It's a huge misstep by me not showing that, then by all means, yell at me and I'll eventually do it. So we might as well go to the north here because there's not really anywhere else for us to go. Let's talk to this guy. Uh, you have nothing interesting to say. You have nothing interesting to say. Nobody has anything interesting to say to us. What else is new? Alright, Route 13. Here we are. And I'm probably going to split this up because there's quite a bit to do as far as trainers and uh, grabbing some items. So we'll do part of this route in uh, this episode and we'll come back and finish it up next time because we're already at just about 12 and a half minutes into the video. So yeah, I don't want to drag it out too long. So our first battle on this route, you're going to have a Cricket Tide at level 64. Why? I have no freaking idea. But it goes for Bide and dies in one hit to my Frogonol's Ice Beam, so that worked out very nicely for me, I guess. Charmeco is next, and this thing's a little bit bulkier, especially on the uh, special side, so Ice Beam's probably not going to kill it. Nope, it survives and goes for an extra sensory, which my Kraganol basically just eats for breakfast. He eats special attack for breakfast. Yum, 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 yum. That was awkward. All right. Jamaica goes down after a second hit there, and yeah, these people also give you a lot of money, so I suggest using the amulet coin here as well. These people are just so rich, it's not even funny. I mean, look at that scarf. Clearly a rich person's scarf. So, Farfetch is our opponent here, level 64. Thankfully, I've got my trusty Kragan on here, uh, out here. He's going to finish off with an ice beam very easily. I just can't talk today. I keep tripping over my words. I'm not sure why. Who knows? Grand Bull's gonna be next, and I found myself like changing their types to Fairy in my head recently. Even though Fairy did not exist in this game, not sure why. I guess I've just been playing X and Y so much that that's just what's been happening. But uh, that's not the case. Grand Bull is normal type in this game, so I guess I could have went for a Drain Punch, but I figured that a stab surf would do more, so went for that. Goes for the takedown, which again is stab in this generation. Now I'm going to go for the drain punch since I lost a good bit of health, um, but he ends up going for a full restore, which I was not expecting. Uh, but that's going to actually allow me to finish off the Grand Bull without taking another hit, so I guess that works too. And down it goes. So that, that wasn't too bad, and it turns out that that's the only Pokemon that this guy has, so that's it for that battle. Oh look, a double battle, I think. Yes. Double battle it is. I have no idea who's in my second slot, I guess I'm gonna find out. Luzel and Minin. Fantastic. Alright, and I've got Archeops and Kraganol going here, so... I guess I'll go for an Ice Beam on Minin, and we'll go for a Rock Slide, because that'll hit both of the little opposing mice. So, wow, that did a lot of damage. Looks like I got a critical hit on Kluzel, so he dies. And it still almost kills Minin. 
so it looks like it's not even going to get to attack. Neither of them are. And the crit really didn't matter, either. Well, no, I guess it did. I guess it did. One of them would have been able to attack. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. I'm crazy. Uh, okay. I don't know why you're just now teaching me how to use the cross transceiver. I still always want to call it the X transceiver. I don't know why they can't just write out cross. It's not that difficult. It's only a few letters. So, uh, let's see here. Looks like Seismitoad is my lowest level Pokemon at level 65, but, um, yeah. We'll take the lucky egg from Kraganol and give it to Zebstrika. Why not? Seismitoad's pretty easy to level up. Zebstrika has trouble because it's kind of a bad Pokemon, honestly. It's a good, like, playthrough Pokemon, I guess. Kind of, sort of. Despite dying all the time. But, I don't know, I just think it has a really cool design. It's a shame that its stats aren't better. Oh, so it looks like we're gonna need strength here. And I don't have that, so I was not expecting to need strength here. To be honest, I don't really remember everything that goes along with these routes from the after game, so... Or post game. Whatever. I guess, since we're gonna stop up here shortly and call it an episode, I will head back and get somebody that has strength so we can get whatever is on the other side of that. I love killing Audinos. There's something about just pulverizing them that makes me happy. I know that sounds wrong, but so true. Alright, well since I have Zip Strick out in the front here, might as well battle this fisherman guy. Magikarp, maybe? He has two Pokemon, and no, nope, he's gonna start out with Krabby at level 64. And Krabby's have a lot of attack and defense, so I'm hoping that Wild Charge will be enough to kill him. They do not have a lot of HP, though, so I shouldn't take a lot of recoil. And Krabby does go down in one hit, and indeed, I do not take that much as far as recoil from Wild Charge. Octillery is gonna be next. I should outspeed it, and I do. And hopefully this will one-hit KO. And it does! Alright, so that was a pretty simple battle. And I'm also going to grow up to level 67 after defeating the Octillery, and that does it for Fisherman Vince. I hate that Fisherman just never give you any money when you win. I guess it's not as bad as Swimmers, but still, don't understand why they have no money to give you. Let's see what's over here. Uh, yeah, I could have sworn there was a trainer over here. There he is. A black belt, so probably don't want like zero health as Ebstrika out there. We'll go ahead and send out Archaeops. Should be able to finish off whatever this guy has with acrobatics pretty easily. And I guess after that we will call it an episode. Black belt Benjamin. Alright, so he has a sock at level 65. Hopefully this thing does not have sturdy, otherwise that could be a problem. But I guess it doesn't matter now, because he goes for Quick Guard. Stupid move. Acrobatics ends up finishing off Sock anyway, so I guess that wasn't that big of a deal. His next Pokemon is going to be Hitmonlee at level 65. Hitmonlee is not that big of a threat. It's not faster than Archeops. So he does go for the Endor there, but like I said, he can't outspeed me, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Probably gonna go for a reversal on the next turn, at least that would make the most sense, but I guess it doesn't matter there. So Dragon Claw finishes him off, and that is it. So I guess we're gonna call it an episode here. There's not really anything else for us to do. It's a good place to stop. I'll go pick up somebody that has strength so we can uh, finish off this route next time. And yeah, well, thank you very much for watching. And one more thing that I wanted to say is that we actually have a new affiliate that we're working with. His name is Proto Mario. And he's running an awesome series over on his channel about Pokemon Theories, which is just fantastic. I've actually been watching it for quite a while, but I thought I'd recommend it to you guys. Uh, if you guys like Pokemon and Pokemon history, it's an incredible series, and it's not just the usual crappy stuff either. So definitely go check it out. Make sure you leave a like on his videos, subscribe, all that stuff, and do the same for us if you enjoyed the video. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Game on.